Hi, my name is Vinay and uh, I'm here to make a video just to explain you how you can make a D-type flip-flop using Macron CMOS Glissize software and uh, what things you can learn out of it. So let's say if you are making a D-type flip-flop, so you can attach a couple of objectives like you can check how its schematic works. Uh, you can do functional verification. Okay, then you can convert into CMOS layout. Okay, and along with that, maybe you can find uh, minimum clock width at which it will work. Okay, so let's start going. So for this, I will use our software DSCH, which is a digital schematic editor, and I will draw something for you. So DSCH has a ready-made library of a D register. We call it. We call this a D register, although it's a D type flip-flop, which is edge triggered. But this is negative edge triggered. So this is a ready-made component. So to make use of it, I can just drag drop a button and another button for the reset. Then I can take clock-like symbol to give him a clock. Then I can attach an LED for its Q terminal and maybe another LED for its Q bar signal. So I call this as uh, N of Q. You can just double click, select the name of the component you press the right click and microwind enters into wiring mode. So you just connect the signals to each other and make sure that you label them properly because that is always helpful. And this we call as DM. So there we are. We have made a schematic which is of um, D type of flop. So let's start simulation of this. So you can press this play button to start the simulation. So you can see the clock is coming and uh, I see that the D is 0 and the reset is 0. Now if I apply reset, so the Q is 0 and Q is definitely 1. Now if I apply D in, so you can see that the Q also turns to 1. As I remove this D in, the Q goes back to 0. Okay, so it follows the D in. You can slow down the clock to see the impact of it. As of now, uh, this is 10 nanosecond low and high. So let me show you the plots first. So this is how the plots looks like. So you can see the clock is running very fast and wherever you apply D in, the Q is following the D in as it is. So let's slow down the clock to see uh, slow moving signal so that you can see how does it respond. Although still it is very fast in the real world. So run simulation, you apply reset to make the Q as 0. Then let's say the clock is 1. So you apply as the clock goes 0, the output is transferred to the, sorry, the input is transferred to the output. Okay. So as I make D0, so suddenly, immediately on the negative edge of the clock, you can see the Q goes 0. So let's save this file somewhere on the desktop. Maybe I just store it as reg one or maybe demo okay so you can see that this is a simple dreg you have made and you have stored it okay now let's go to the next objective that we want to convert this into a layout and see how does it works so for the layout software program we have microwind 3.9 i'm using in my package so by default, you can see the software started with 7 nanometer technology. I can change this technology to something older for a little bit more comforting results. So I can see in the rule files, uh, this is CMOS 120 nanometer. Then uh, this is 90 nanometer. Maybe I can just select. So you can select like 3 nanometer, 5 nanometer. So a lot of rule files in the Macron software program, right from uh, 1.2 micrometer to latest nanometer of the FinFET technologies and even the nano sheets. So I select CMOS 012. So you can see that it is CMOS 0 0.12 micrometer that is 120 nanometer rule file. 
Okay. So to convert that flip-flop into a real-world CMOS layout, you can say compile Verilog. Go to the browse to the folder where you have stored it. But you see that there is nothing Verilog file, you don't find it. Because in the schematic program, we missed one step that we have to go to file, say make Verilog file. So he will convert into an equivalent Verilog checklist. Now, when you come to the micro program, you see that suddenly a DRES demo file is present over there. You select this one and say compile. So there you are. There you can see that uh, it has converted and DRED, that is the D flop, into equivalent CMOS layout. So there you can see these are the NMOS and these are the PMOS transfers present. Okay, they are not on top of each other because the widths are different. Hence, the macaron has separated the PMOS and NMOS lines. So here we have the clock. So we can check each and every signal again. So this is my clock signal. Uh, I don't want this to be that slow. I make it like uh, one nanosecond low and one nanosecond high. I apply D in something a uh, slow varying signal, which is, should be good, like uh, three nanosecond and three nanosecond high is good enough. I double click on the reset. This should not be a clock. This should be a pulse. So I go to pulse assign a rising pulse and assign it. Then I simulate this. So there you see that uh, the clock is toggling. The D is toggling with 3 nanosecond. As you apply reset, the Q, Q goes to 0. And after the reset is pulled low, so on every negative edge of the clock, it follows the so you can see this is negative of the clock. So if you go down, you see that the output transition happens only on the negative edge of the clock. Okay. So you can see that the output is following the input. There is disparency. I mean, you can see that there's some lower voltage coming on the output of N and Q and some spikes coming on the Q. So there are some deeper discussions that students can make with their faculties to understand that why this is happening because the DREG makes use of some gates which has slow rise and fall time. Hence, these delays impact and causes such out transients. So let's see that at what frequency till the same circuit will keep on working. So I just double click on the clock and make it two times faster. So if you click this button, it will make the, any signal two times go faster. Now you simulate again. So there you see that still the output is following the input. You can reduce the simulation width to make the things go faster. So there you can see that the, this is the output following the input. Okay. So this is the Q bar signal, Q signal in the red and the Q bar in the green. Now let's apply clock a little bit more faster. So I make it 0.1, so it's quite faster. So there you see that as I made the clock faster, the output has stopped responding to the input. So that means this is the clock width at which my circuit is not going to work. So maybe I can a little bit go up two times lower, so make it 0.25. Yes, so somewhere my minimum clock width lies between 0.1 and 0.2. Okay, so maybe you can open up the Micron software and find it by yourself that what is the minimum clock period of the D type of flop for 120 nanometer and how it is going to operate. Okay, so this is all about flip flop. Yes, you can definitely study the other factors Micron which offers you to allow to study like what is the voltage, what is the rise and fall delays which are coming up, okay? Then you can also study how much is the power consumption of the DFF flop. Let's say you just apply a reset to the flip flop, then how much amount of power it will consume? For example, I just double click on the reset and type to VCC. So this will make the DFF flop always turn off. It will be always reset mode, okay? So does it consume any power? And then how much? It is 951. 
micro warp. So this is some transient key in the startup delays. So maybe I run another cycle with no transition happening. So you can see it is 17 nanowatt only. So that is a standby power consumption of your design. But still, why 17 nanowatt? So you can find out the reasons behind it that the clock is still ticking on some gates and switches. Okay, so they are consuming a minor amount of power. So how you can turn them off? So such kind of studies you can make with Micron software. And I hope this will help you to, in understanding your uh, experiments better of your college level. And Micron offers a lot of examples. You have to just say, uh, open the example folder. And uh, you can go in the latches library. And you can see there are a lot of uh, examples like uh, this is SR, uh, NAND gate base latch. So you can try working on this. And uh, more about it like this is a DRG mask so this is a little bit more optimized DRG in compiled way and uh, this is D latch level triggered this is not S trigger this is level trigger okay so this is circuit you can see this is more optimized in the placement and routing as compared to what we have done automatic compilation using Verilog file so this is how Micron can help you in understanding your circuits much more faster and easier way. Go make use of Micron software. If you have any questions, you can write an email to me. Thank you so much.